We allocated resources to the different activities. Now we have to estimate how long these resources will need to complete the tasks. What are the principles of duration estimation? What tools and techniques we can use? What's the position of the project manager and the estimating process? We have to look at effort, duration and elapsed time. And we also have to identify what time people have available for working on activities. Duration estimation is typically done in a three-step approach. First, we determine the effort to complete a task or activity. From that, we identify the duration. And finally, we can determine the elapsed time. The main question here is, how long will it take to complete an activity. Is the duration depending on the number of resources allocated to the task or not? That's the first element to consider. A second element relates to historical information. Do we have information about similar activities that we did in the past or do we have other sources that can give us an idea about the duration or the effort of the activity. A point which is always confusing and open for discussion is the precision of the estimates. How exact will an estimate be? There is always some discussion, some interpretation. People tend to add extra security. So the duration estimates are longer. The activities take a longer time to complete. Now, working with managers and with people, we don't like variations of activities, variation of costs. We want to have a clear estimate. This task will take 25 hours and that's it. Unfortunately, there is some variability that is normal for all actions we undertake for all measurements we take, variability is just a part of our everyday life. So we have to take it into account in a way that it's logical and understandable by all the stakeholders. Let's have a look at tools and techniques for estimating. The first tool is historical information. All the information, all the experiences we gather when doing projects are kept in the historical information. All estimates we did before can be found at the same place. Third, program evaluation and review technique or three-point estimating is a technique based on statistical principles where we find an estimated duration with a probability of 50% and a standard deviation. Both elements give us tools to calculate a probabilistic approach to duration estimating. The Delphi method is very popular where you bring expert people together. Those people determine duration estimates and they compare their reasoning to see where main differences in estimating can be. Typically after three sessions an acceptable estimate for the duration is reached. We can look at analogies with similar activities. 
or we can use parametric estimating where we base a duration estimate on the time to do a unit of the same work. For example, to construct one square meter of concrete, we can say it takes one day, so 10 cube meters we have, 10 days. Expert judgment, also in combination with the Delphi method, when we still have very large activities, it can help to decompose them further. And when we are looking at estimations, typically people tend to add reserves and some buffers to be sure that the estimate is acceptable. There may be other methods used like research. We can look at industry standards and all the databases which are available today can also be a good basis for estimating. The project manager is an important person when it comes to estimation. The role in the creation of valuable and correct estimates is a very important function of the project manager. You have to get all the people working on those estimates and all the people that are relevant should be working on providing that estimate. The team needs to have sufficient information and there have to be precise guidelines how to make the estimates. Estimates have to be compared and a sanity check has to be conducted to be sure that the estimates are acceptable. The project manager also has to prevent duration inflation or padding. He or she has to avoid that the people add too much reserve, too much extra time just to be sure that the task or the activity will finish in time. The project manager also has to understand the variability of activity duration and should be able to give instructions how to apply these principles on the estimations. All estimating principles, assumptions, the calculation methods, all these elements have to be recorded for later reference. When you want to compare new estimates with old estimates or you want to find out what went wrong, these records are of key importance. Let's have a look at effort, duration and elapsed time. The effort is the work required to complete the activity by one person. Duration is the number of periods needed to complete the activity when we add more people, when we add people with higher skills or lower skills. We have to adjust the effort into a duration estimate. And finally, we go to the elapsed time. That's the time or the calendar time that we need to complete the activity. We will look at some examples later on. Let's have a look at the same thing in a more graphical representation, the same three steps. Base effort is obtained by using Delphi method, PERT, historical data and all the other elements that we have. We come to project effort we look at the level and number of people, the tools that are available, so we adjust the base effort, and then we adjust the duration. We calculate from the project effort the duration, depending on fixed or variable duration tasks. And again, from this duration, we can find the elapsed time on the calendar. Let's have a look at 
some examples. We have activities A and B. Effort A takes 20 periods. So, in our case days, we allocate two people. So the duration of that activity will be 10 days. When we start this activity on Monday, July the 2nd, 2018, we will see that finally the activity finishes on July the 13th, which is more than those 10 days. But the reason is very simple. There is one weekend included in that period and the project doesn't continue during the weekend. So the elapsed time is in fact longer than the 10 days. It will be 12 days instead of 10 days. The same for activity B, which is now 30 days effort. With five people, it gives a duration of six days. Again, Monday, July the 16th, we will see that the project will start on July the 23rd, which is again a Monday. Eight days on the calendar instead of a duration of six. An important element to consider when we are making estimations to calculate the duration of activities, we have to understand that working 100% of the time is impossible. We know people get ill over the year. There are typically unplanned interruptions with a percentage of about 33, which means that you get a telephone call, your boss comes and asks something, you're interrupted in your work. These are unplanned interruptions. You cannot estimate them. You cannot really count with them. Statistics shows that it's about 33%. We can concentrate on a job for a limited time, typically 75%. That's the reason why when you go to class, you have a break, typically 10 minutes every hour or 15 minutes. Those interruptions are important to keep the people active. People may have holidays, meetings, trainings, and other uh, elements that are going on that take them away from the project. Related to holidays, there may be country-specific rules and regulations. So you have to take these into account. Typically, a good estimate for the time that people are available to do the project work is about 50% of their time. So, we identify the people, we estimate their duration and the time they are working on the activities. Now we have to do some more estimations in the next session. Keep on the good work and see you there soon.